so OCA are kind of small cancer charity. Um, our kind of main aims are around kind of fundamentally research, but also kind of raising awareness of signs and symptoms. Um, obviously fundraising and so on and so on. Um, we're about 20 people, um, I would say, probably in total. Um, so I'm the head of communications and marketing. I'm a maternity cover as well. Um, so the team in comms is very small. There's probably about four of us focused purely on comms. And then we have a couple of data people uh, as part of the comms team. Uh, the latest data person has basically been brought in as part of this data strategy to essentially be data and insight manager. So in terms of kind of responsibilities of what I look after, basically all comms remit across the charity. So that's anything from marketing, digital, PR, um, brand, whatever you name it, really kind of it all sits under my responsibility. So I'm kind of the comms lead, uh, I suppose. You mentioned about the issues as well in the uh, not profit sector. I suppose issues mainly for those say it's resource. Um, uh, naturally, uh, we probably punch above our weight in terms of what we are able to kind of perceptions I would say in terms of kind of what we look like and kind of what we do but obviously we only have that 20 people so in terms of what we're actually able to do um, it's it's kind of managing that and kind of being efficient with how we do things to rather I'd rather do five things really really well than 50 things not brilliantly <laughs> and that's the classic balance with any small organization especially charities where obviously it's dependent on funding and you're far more hand-to-mouth compared to some of the bigger organizations so um a lot of kind of what my role has been in terms of the maternity cover aspect has been really kind of quite foundational, I suppose. So it'd be amazing to do loads of like really whiz bang, brilliant award winning campaigns and stuff. And there are a little bit of that, but also you don't want to be doing those moments when you know that your kind of foundations aren't really in place, which is kind of where the data strategy kind of came into place, where you know that if our processes and our policies aren't particularly good, <laughs> um, the last thing you want to be doing is kind of like flooding that database with more and more rubbish um, through big campaigns or equally taking people on bad journeys. A lot of it was to do with the fact that we were going to launch a new strategy um, and as part of that strategy uh, the big element of it was really transforming income and kind of that then leading to more investment in research, more investment in raising awareness and really kind of supercharging the potential to save more lives in the future basically. So really kind of like you know um, uh, dramatically kind of improve survival rates over the next 10 years. So it's kind of a, a drip feed I guess to, in terms of that and so in order for that to happen we kind of needed to be a I don't want to say data driven but kind of data powered maybe is a better phrase yeah. organization where if we were going to transform fundraising then at the heart of that we need to make sure we're retaining supporters, we need to make sure that we are when we're acquiring supporters we are acquiring the right data to take them on those journeys. We are, you know, reporting on income as quickly as possible. Sure. You know, all those things that kind of relate to yeah. basically having a, a better base for growing. In. And there's also the kind of uh, the cultural aspect as well in terms of, you know, taking people into a more data power mindset. So kind of understanding the value of what their role was in terms of maintaining the database or um, understanding consent or understanding kind of what they were allowed to do and stuff especially with you know GDPR coming in a few years ago and we were probably we weren't particularly brilliant in that sense so I think a lot of it kind of pulled this idea that in order for us to grow this was a real fundamental thing we needed and so that led to us kind of reaching out to a few organizations I believe um, to pitch basically and I think that led to us appointing a Qantas just because of your track record of doing these kind of things that the type of organizations like us in terms of size wise and kind of remit and so it kind of felt like you understood us in terms of what we were trying to achieve kind of gave us a kind of clear plan around kind of how you would do it that made sense and was kind of clear for us and that was that really there's definite pain points and I think this is one of the things that we did early on with the Qantas actually um with with Rob and the team basically around bringing many stakeholders across the organization kind of together to understand how they currently felt about how we did data and it really highlighted obviously common issues around a kind of a lack of understanding in terms of you know anything to do with the database or to do with consent or to do with what we are allowed to do and what we aren't allowed to do all the way to more kind of technical things like how to use our database and you know those kind of things so it kind of highlighted all these areas in terms of there was just I guess holes in every aspect from the cultural side of things to the the capabilities to the resource that we had yeah those are the kind of the biggest issues that across it was kind of a lot of issues I, I guess really that there was a legacy of probably bad data management in terms of we hadn't maybe employed the right level of people and that then led to 
lots of things in terms of bad data being put in the database, a lack of a kind of paper trail around processes. Why is the database structured the way it is? No one knows because that person's not here and there's no paper trail to explain why that was. And so there was a kind of all these things pulled together where you kind of create a perfect storm really of there's just clear issues. But the one thing we did have was a leadership level, a kind of real appetite to do this. So there wasn't that case of you're having to try and, you know, at a more junior level, you're having to convince the leaders, the CEO, et cetera, to kind of say, right, we should back this. Yeah. Actually, it was the other way around. I think really happy. I think, um, <clears throat> again, it's, it's the tricky bit of uh, kind of navigating a kind of a quite data immature organization in terms of personnel and stuff and so in some ways you kind of had to take two steps back to go one step forward because you're kind of having to understand people's kind of lack of knowledge about data or kind of bringing them up to a level where they can understand why we're how we're going forward I suppose and so I think Rob was very good at that as well as he's done it before at other organizations and stuff and can kind of explain to people kind of where we wanted to get to which was the most important thing and kind of get them to kind of share their issues I suppose in a forums that made them realize that, oh they actually had similar issues and actually it's not some kind of like special individual thing about somebody and, and 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 to kind of group those together into kind of key themes basically and so I think that was what really helped us at Qantas do in terms of kind of find those key themes that people had and then kind of basically replay them back to us to kind of go okay we've listened to what you're you're saying here's the highlights really and that kind of then goes okay people can start to see okay I can see what the big issues are actually as opposed to my kind of like individual problem with inputting somebody on razor's edge yeah. is part of a bigger issue and so then when we kind of given the not the roadmap but the kind of key areas that we needed to improve on it was a journey people understood because they've been involved in the process they could kind of see That's where nice. we were going and what we were doing um and so yeah everyone was very happy with that it said the initial workshops were really good it kind of it got most people on board so i think the biggest ones are so we employed a data and insight manager so that was who's basically yeah. going to well, the plan is for them to oversee the project, really, um, or delivery of the, of the work. We actually, so we've got Rob from Aquantis on a retainer, basically, for like a day a month. So that's what basically we're using him for, essentially, from a from a consultant point of view, to help advise on that. And we're also using Aquantis for a part of the project around consent. So we're kind of, we've got kind of yeah. Tanya, a few hours of yeah. time um, to do that. We will still use Aquantis from a, a kind of consultancy point of view to advise on, yeah, are we doing this right? Is this working? What do you think, et cetera? Because yeah, we don't have that level of resource or experience and knowledge internally. Yeah. So kind of need that advice, I suppose. It being far more of a focus in the work that we do and far more of a conscious thought in the projects that we do and that we're being a lot more concerned with these things. And so I think that's a really good thing because it just it's as I said that's part I guess of the change management bit in terms of just initially kind of making people care more about the data things side of things yeah. um, and that being a bigger part of the job and seeing how that plays a bigger role in the things that we do. Uh, we're starting to I think on a kind of like maybe project by project basis where we're kind of like you know refining stuff so for instance we um we've kind of made sure that we have a walk in our name fundraising project that kind of is in March basically it's a step challenge um, and as part of that that's how Tanya's advised um, our data person on kind of consent with that and the forms we're capturing and that's resulted in a much much higher um, opt-in rate um, and we know that the data coming in as well is going to be good data that's the other yeah. thing in terms of you know when you've got crappy forms or you've got bad privacy policy statements or whatever you kind of then you're just adding more crap data to a database that's got a lot of crap data on it so I think what we're doing with this we know that okay the data coming in is quality we're servicing them on good journeys we're doing some good reporting so that's a good kind of um, isolated example of in the future all of our work should be like this and if mm -hmm. that's the case then it kind of fills you with good confidence because you know that the machine is working quite well across every level and so that's I think something we can kind of go it's a bit of a almost like a trailer for the yeah. future that kind of says if the world looks like this actually that'll be pretty good.